Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another real great unicorn review and man, how many has it been so far? The standard version, the standard version band Destiny, the full armor, Banshee, Banshee final battle, I don't know, there's probably even more, there's the light up one too, but this right here is the real great Gundam base exclusive Unicorn Gundam Perfectibility. So is this the perfect real grade Unicorn Gundam or not? I guess we're gonna find out. If you do want one of your own, once again as usual, I got mine through Bayi. So if you're looking for some rare, hard to get, or exclusive kits, more often than not, you'll find them there. Link in the description, now here we go. So jumping on in with the overview straight away, and as you would expect, there's a whole lot of stuff in this box, and a lot of it is from the Real Grade Unicorn, the original release. We've got some from the Banshee, the Full Armor, the Phoenix. There is a lot going on in this box, so a lot of it we would have seen before, as the perfectibility is, in essence, all of those suits smashed together into a white and blue unicorn. So that's enough about what's in here, we'll get back to this later, let's get right to the perfectibility itself. Anyway, that right there is the perfectibility out of box snapped together with a little bit of panel lining and some decals up there, mainly around the upper body. So for this review, I kind of half put it together first so you can see what the main unit inside of it looks like, then add all the parts on so we can see everything one at a time. So straight away, this is pretty much the standard real grade unicorn just in blue and white. You can see around the back there, we do have the Banshee Norns backpack. And I'll also mention at this point right here, we do end up with a lot of stuff left over on the runners after building this. So I see a lot of Banshee on here, so you can probably make some variant of the Banshee from this kit if you wanted to, in white. Well, definitely the head anyway, but there is a lot of plastic left over on the runners, so if you like that sort of thing, it's here to get. But anyway, let's get this built up into the full perfectibility, then transform to unicorn mode, and see, well... How well it can hold together compared to that one hidden in back there that I will never, ever, ever touch again. That's the Master Grade, by the way. So first up in here we've got a couple of Banshee parts, starting with the Armed Armor VN. So this attaches on pretty simply, just onto either side of the left arm like so. The armor parts are included in here if you do not want to use this for whatever reason. And that right there is what it looks like once it is attached, looking pretty awesome in white there. Next up for the other arm we've got this right here which is the Armed Armor BS, and the only thing that's BS right here is the fact that this never got a full release. Both versions, P Bandai. Black, white, P Bandai. So there we go, now we've got the Armed Armor BS attached. This is looking really, really cool in this real great level of detail. And honestly, it is such a bizarre combination to see the Banshee Norn and Banshee's weapons on a unicorn. Anyway, let's continue. So now moving from Banshee to Phoenix, and we've got the Armed Armor DE Wings. Once again, we would have seen these before with the real grade Phoenix, but this time they are in that glossy white and blue combination. These look so good. So attaching these is pretty much the same as what we would have seen with the Phoenix. That's you attach both of these Armed Armor DE Wings onto this little pair of arms, and then attach it into the backpack. However, we do have one little bit of a difference, which is the big... Banshee Norn bit of psycho plate around the backpack. This isn't really much of an issue because you open it up to attach it, but if you are a little bit of a purist, you will notice one thing. In the animation short where we did see the perfectibility Gundam or the full armor plan B, when it took off in unicorn mode, it did have that plate shut with those wings on its back, but that cannot be done with this particular kit because the arms that hold on the wings does get in the way of the psycho plates closing together. But I will also mention when it says about attaching this in the manual, it does say to do it in destroy mode. So it seems like this real grade is more designed to be displayed in destroy mode than it is in unicorn mode. Of course you can do both, but it will not be 100% accurate to that animation short. But I will mention if you leave them open like this right here, like I have had for a lot of this review. They look like tiny little angel wings, which I think is cool. So it can attach on, just not 100% accurate. Not the biggest deal. So anyway, before we activate that NTD, there's the full spin of what this looks like in unicorn mode. Once again, this is such a cool combination. It's like the Phoenix, it's like the Banshee, it's like the standard unicorn, and I adore it. That blue also is such a cool color on there. As for how well this holds up, compared to the Master Grade, this thing is an absolute masterpiece. The only issue I have is it's spinning a little bit on the action base, and I'd say that's more so the action base's fault, not the real grade. Anyway, let's get this thing transformed. But first, it's the return of the... Who's that Gundam part? 
So here is the offender this time. I have no idea what it's from. It's very, very small. It looks like it might be from a high grade or a real grade. I'm not sure. I found it on the floor just after doing some office cleaning. It looks like it may come from the underside or rear of a torso near the arm, but I could not tell you. So if you could tell me what Gunpla this is from, I would be forever in your debt because I have no idea. So as for the transformation of the perfectibility here, it's pretty much exactly the same as we've seen with multiple different real grade unicorns before, but I will mention that because there is a whole lot more going on here, that does mean the small, fragile, finicky nature of the real grade unicorn really starts to shine. It's by no means as bad as the master grade which falls apart all over the place, but it still has that kind of there's nowhere really to touch it kind of vibe. No matter where you grab, you're going to untransform something that you previously transformed. Once again, a lot of what we see here is what we've seen before. So that means parts formation for the head. You do have to take off some parts, reattach them. If you use the non-transforming V-fin, you'll have to swap it out for the new one. The shoulders are a little bit difficult until you realize that you have to hold in the part that attaches them to the arm while pushing down on the top, otherwise it won't split properly. That is something that took me a long, long time to learn. Next up then, in the instructions it did say to transform the arms before adding the armed armors. This I recommend doing because once the armed armors are on there, it is hard to transform the forearm underneath them, so this gets extremely finicky. And then, when I got down to the legs, I got a whole lot of falling off parts I've never felt before with any of the real grade unicorns that I've built and transformed before. Now this is unusual because I built this in the exact same way with the same amount of care as all of those other kits, and logic kind of defines the fact that this should be exactly the same as those, besides the plastic or something like that, but honestly, maybe it's just I've gotten too used to the heavy duty locking mechanisms that are in the master grade extreme that maybe this is a lot more delicate than I remembered. But besides that, once again, once you have this transformed, it feels like there's nowhere you can touch this kit that you won't end up on transforming something by accident. Once again, there is no real locking mechanism, so you're gonna have to really touch this with a lot of finesse and just be careful pretty much all of the time. But besides that, ridiculous ridiculous engineering it's such a tiny little kit anyway while that is spinning you can see that this does look so cool we can see all of the psycho plate we could not see before in that absolutely beautiful shade of clear blue we've also got some metallic blue sections in the armed armors that have opened up. And what can I say, I wanted that blue all Nippon Airways Unicorn Gundam since I first saw it way back when, and this kind of feels like it's the ultimate version of that particular color scheme. Once again, it is a little bit finicky, but looks phenomenal. So yeah, this still has the same awesome articulation as we would have seen with the full release version of the real grade unicorn. Once again, with these kind of reviews where I've seen the kit and we've seen the kit over and over and over again, you can go check out the original review if you want to see all of the articulation of the kit. But one thing I will mention is this definitely has full on too much going on syndrome. Sure, it is really cool, but that does mean that this isn't really a kit for play, it's more of a kit for display because it will constantly fall apart a lot. Not in the kind of master grade sort of way, just in a more delicate, very fine, small scale model kit kind of way. There is a lot going on in this kit, which means a lot of things to fail while you're trying to put it into a pose. However, if you want poses, you will definitely get poses. If you like super finicky model kits that have tweaking to do here and there, eking out the absolute perfect pose from a ridiculously detailed kit with so many moving parts, then you will have an absolute ball with this kit. And without a single doubt, you'll get some ridiculously fantastic poses. However, if you're like me and you're a little bit ham-fisted and you're not the greatest at like being very patient with stuff, then this will drive you absolutely bananas. So yeah, do you like posing finicky, delicate things? Yes, then you love this. No, then you will hate this. But it will still look fantastic on your shelf. But yeah, all the real grade unicorn staples are here, including flip forward beam saber tomfas in the arms. We have some beautiful blue beam effects in here to go with the overall blue and white aesthetic. Switching out the hands, a feat I am not brave enough to try and attempt because I know it will blow to pieces on me. 
We've got a whole ton of other accessories in here, including the Beam Magnum, the gigantic Hyper Beam Javelin we would have seen with the Full Armor version. If you want to see more about that, check out the Full Armor review. This is giant awesome, a little bit delicate, not nearly as bad as the Master Grade, once again. And we also get tiny 144th scale pilot figures of Riddy and Benaji. This end can be pulled off, attached on here like twisted to the side, and attached on here like an absolutely ridiculous beam bayonet. Or attached up here onto the top of the javelin for a double killing power end. So attaching this onto the perfectibility is exactly the same as what we would have seen with the real grade unicorn to date. So that is a sandwich style holding hand which holds on very very well I might add. I'm already hating myself for trying to attach this on because it might fall apart. It did not, thankfully. And honestly, the real grade unicorn is putting up with this absolutely giant weapon and this load in general quite well. But I'm not going to push it. I'm going to put this into a pose and leave it in that pose forever. Also, I almost forgot to mention, we do get a whole bunch of sticker style decals in here. I only used very, very, very few, but... There is a lot. Once again, these are sticker styles, so peel and stick. And because it is white, you can't really see the outlines too much. But you still will see them under very close scrutiny. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And I'm just going to outright say it straight away. I am not going to rank this kit because I feel like I am not qualified enough to do so. The reason is, is because this is an absolutely fantastic kit, but there's too much loaded onto it for me. Some people may be extremely delicate with their hands, have some real finesse with things that are very difficult, but that is not me. So this thing sheds parts more than my dogs shed hair. And you can see from my reviews, they shed a lot of hair. But that is not because of any kind of flaws with the mobile suit or the kit itself. It's more so the fact that it's hard to know where to touch this while trying to do something. And if you're not paying attention to both hands at once, well, you might just knock something off somewhere. But still, this is robust enough to hold on to stuff, robust enough to hold on to all of that that is loaded onto it. But once again, if you are anyways heavy-handed, it will fall to pieces. I'm really hoping they make a Master Grade Extreme variant of the perfectibility. That, I have a feeling, would be able to hold onto all that stuff. But as for this, it is very fragile but the same level of quality we've come to expect from a real grade unicorn. If you've built the full armor unicorn, I would say this is better than that. It's less likely to fall apart than that particular kit. That, I think, is the worst of the bunch for falling apart. This one, not so bad, if you're very, very careful. Besides that, it is absolutely gorgeous. It's great to have something so rare and unique in your collection, and it would have been even better to have picked it up at the Gundam base in Japan. Anyway, if you do want one of these of your own, it may be hard to get right now, you may be able to get it where I got mine, and that was through Bai, so I'll throw a link down there in the description. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for less fragile Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, I cannot end this video right here without thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video, for dropping a like, subscribing, and of course to each and every one of you that supports me over on the channel memberships or over on Patreon like Craig Jerry, Tyler Sanders, The Ambassador for Asymmetric Cats, Caleb Engelhart, Sean T, and Brian Perez.